Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Tome of Uselessness. Mm-hmm. And I said it right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm Devin. I'm Dan. And this weekend, past weekend, we were at Fan Expo working for the shop that I work at. And we thought we'd, uh, we'd give you a little rundown of the Expo of Fans. Mm-hmm. 2017 Fan Expo. Yeah. How many years have you been at Fan Expo now? Uh, every year that they've been in Vancouver, which I think is either five or six, I can't remember. Yeah, I was trying to think if it was five or six. I think I've done four, I want to say. Yeah, I don't think you were there the first year. Yeah. Um, the first year was mind-blowing. No, really? Not because they had, like, really good guests. Or, well, I think Adam West was there. Oh, wow. And the, and the original Batmobile was there. Oh, really? Cool. But, um... It was the first convention that I worked at that was ever really busy. Right. Right? Like, that was one of those conventions, like, that year was basically, like, people were handing me cash, and I had no (laughs) idea why. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Um, But for people who don't know, Fan Expo is just kind of a general nerd convention. Mm -hmm. Um, It's one of the bigger ones that Vancouver does. So it's in the convention center at Canada Place. Um, so, like, there's that one, and then there's Anime Revolution, which is more anime or Japanese in general. Well, themed. yeah, I would say, like, yeah, the biggest one of that kind of type yeah. in the area. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, I mean, as far as nerd conventions go, those are the only two big ones anymore. In Vancouver, yeah. yeah in Vancouver. A, a lot of people, of course, yeah, go to PAX. Which go to PAX, yeah, or to um, Emerald City Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it, I mean, it's cool that there is a Fan Expo in Vancouver, because I know there's Fan Expo Toronto. Uh, they, they just do Toronto and Vancouver, right? And Calgary. And Calgary, okay, sorry, sorry. And uh, Toronto and Calgary usually get bigger guests. Really? Uh, that's kind of weird that the Calgary one would get more than the oh, Vancouver one. Okay, so Calgary, this is what I've, I've understood from sure. talking to other vendors. Yeah, yeah. Because Alberta doesn't have that much to do, uh. <laughs> Calgary conventions, kind of regardless of what they are... Are just mad. Everybody makes bank. Oh, fair like, enough. Everybody, huh. yeah. So there's it's a higher attendance and everybody has cash. Huh. Yeah. Especially a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so this year... So in the past, we've had some kind of big guests. Bruce mm-hmm. Campbell was a guest one year. Yeah, it was great. Um... Billy Boyd, who played Pippin in Lord of the Rings, who was my secret boyfriend, (laughs) was there. Uh, Carl Urban. Yeah. Um, Stan Lee was there one year, and he walked by my booth, and I just about died of a heart attack. Well, and I remember when Carl Urban walked by. (laughs) Yeah, Carl Urban, yeah. Uh, Carrie Fisher was a guest. Yes. And Dan sold her a sparkly bra. I did. Rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. Yeah. It was a pretty interesting encounter. (laughs) It was was pretty interesting, because I didn't recognize her, and I'm like, who let this crazy lady in with a dog? (laughs) Yeah. There should be dogs in here. Yeah, that was an interesting one. (laughs) And I was trying to tie a girl into a corset, and she kept trying to, like take a selfie that had Carrie Fisher in it but yeah. without like asking her for a selfie so it was this like really awkward moment where she's like <laughs> got her camera and I'm like facing the other way and I'm like what is this girl doing like yeah. hold still I'm trying to tie you into a corset and I recall as well it was really busy at the time when yeah. she was at the booth so I wasn't being like oh my god it's Carrie Fisher because again yeah. I didn't really recognize her initially either because again it was just super busy and I was just helping people and so yeah. she asked me questions about these stuff and I was like and then it was like yeah not till a little bit into the encounter that it was like oh, oh it's Princess Leia Princess Leia selling her a bra <laughs> it was pretty awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> um they both had J- or John Barrowman I was about to say that John Barrowman yeah. he he was definitely something else uh, he, I know he has a reputation for being really you know interactive with his fans and stuff mm-hmm. like that but seeing it in action was something else like he he is yeah he's yeah. class gentleman just Give totally. everybody the time of day. I almost ran into him carrying your lunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was he polite was, with Jeff Barrowman. <laughs> he was doing, like, going to booths and doing... Everybody... I don't know what it is, but every year they sell these plushy llama things. Oh, yeah. You've seen them. They're kind of shaped like a potato, but they have, like, a llama head on oh, okay. it. okay, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're, like, the booth just covered in, like... And there's, like, four or five vendors that sell these weird fucking llama things. Sure. <laughs> Anyways, he was doing llama dances with um, them and nice. letting people film him and stuff. He's, yeah. he's pretty cool. He was, yeah, he was, like I said, it was definitely, um, 
neat to see him in yeah. that game, and he's just having a good time as well, as, and his fans were as well. Yeah, he's totally. Like, yeah. And River, so- the actress that plays River Song from Doctor Who was there one year. Yes, that's right. Um, oh, uh, the actor that played Malfoy was there one year. Yeah. Tom Felton? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so they've, they've had some good guests in the past. Yeah. This year was a little, you know... Yeah, it was interesting to look at the guest list, and I almost didn't recognize so many people just because I don't watch The Flash or yeah. Arrow. Or... So there was a lot of... <laughs> There was a lot of um, guests that were from shows that are filmed in Vancouver. Yeah, they're local so, shows. Yeah, so Arrow, there was a bunch of people. The Flash, there was a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. There was a few people from iZombie. Yes. Um, a few people from, or at least one person from Riverdale. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there were also two of the Power Rangers, the blue one yeah, and the yeah. red one. I. I think, which my husband freaked out about and uh, (laughs) flirted with. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, And then um, I guess the big draw was... What's his name? Yeah, Henry Winkler. I was about to say that was was interesting. It was like... Was it trying to just, yeah, draw an, uh, an older crowd? Because... Obviously, the Fonz, you know, yeah. like that's what was its big role, I guess, you know. And so it was like, yeah, where they're just trying to draw fans of that era to come in, and then you know maybe they would, yeah, would check out Fan Expo because again, it would be usually it's always more of a younger crowd, right? Yeah, or, or like people. It it kind of reminded me of like this one. What was it called? Halloween Mega Comic Con, <laughs> which that that I did, that was. At a hotel in a ballroom, so it wasn't a really big one. Yeah, yeah. And their their big guest was Dustin Diamond, who was Screech on <laughs> on Saved by the Bell. Nice. And I was like setting up, and like it was before people came in, and then this like fat middle aged guy drinking a Slurpee <laughs> comes by and was like talking to me, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. You're like, fuck off! I'm setting up. <laughs> And then it's like, oh, that's their big guest. Oops. Whoops. Yeah. And then Aaron came that year. Mm. I don't think you came to that I, one. No, I missed that one. But Aaron showed up, and he was trying to get her to take a picture with him. <laughs> Aaron's my cousin, and she's hot. So And, and like, alternative. So he yeah. wanted, like, a picture with her, and she's like, fuck off, Screech. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So yeah, it was like I said. So it was, it interesting. Was, yeah, it was it was yeah. an odd choice. Uh, and again, it was like you're saying, if the guests are bigger at some of the other events, maybe that, again schedules and because I know that uh, a few people canceled, which is usually always happens. Like, yeah. Where it's like maybe they try to invite. Oh, some more they people. had a bunch of people from Degrassi Junior High. Too. Yes, that's they did. right. Yes. Yeah. And then yeah, like I I think um, Michael Shanks was supposed to be there, but then canceled. And yeah. This and that. So and then of course there are. And I don't know them as well, but there's tons of comic book artists that are there, of oh, course, right? T- yeah, tons of comic book artists, tons so, of voiceover um, yeah, actors. Which, I was going to say, my, I should have done it, but uh, Maurice LaMarche was there, which I think would have been great to go see. If anybody didn't know, he did Pinky and the Brain. He was Brain. <laughs> <laughs> he's done voice work since Scooby-Doo, right? Yeah. He's Futurama, Simpsons. He's done a ton of work. He's he's great. <laughs> he's one of my favorites. Yeah. He's, it was too bad you didn't go say hi. Yeah. yeah. But you know what? Autographs and pictures yeah. are expensive. I think yeah. his was like 30 bucks for an autograph. Yeah. Which that's pretty, that's reasonable-ish, I think. Yeah, but like Henry, Henry Winkler was like... Yeah, I'm I think you were say saying it was 60, 90, wasn't it? 70 was it? or 80 or something like that, yeah. yeah. It was expensive, like... Well, and it's interesting as well that um, not only are they, they have these actors and stuff like that, but there's actually, and I don't know if it was the same three years ago, but definitely two years ago, oh, yeah, no, definitely, because Negri was there. I was going to say cosplayers are there, and people oh, yeah. have to go get, you know, get, go get their autograph. Yeah, everything. that's true. So it's like another That they facet. also pay for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that they pay for to go yeah. hang out with you and see them, right? Yeah. So, yeah, because I know last year, wasn't it um, Meg Turney, who your, our ex-coworker knows <laughs> and stuff like that? Who? Meg Turney isn't she's a she's a well known cosplayer. But who knows her? Annalisa, because I was talking with her once about. Her. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, I know her yeah. and this and that. So that's cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so not only that, but like I was saying, they also get these cosplayers to come. Yeah. And they're there, set up, setting up booths and selling their prints and stuff like that, right? So there's more things as usual that I guess people are spending you know money on or that they're a fan of to come see, right? So yeah, and Fan Expo, I'm like anime revolution mm. for example 
doesn't have a lot of programming going on aside from what goes on in the vendors hall. So they mm-hmm. did have like the speed dating going on. Yes. And I know there was a couple panels, but it was yeah. it was sparse. It was like maybe like one every other hour or something like that. Yeah, that was one of the things I was gonna say that was interesting was that it's like because they did it this year, um, and I was going to talk about it in a bit, but it was like they did a steampunk like 101 thing, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, like you say, it's like, what else was there going on? Because I know that the last year, or was it two years ago when Tom Felton was here, they did a QA with him. Yeah, they, I think there was a QA with the Degra- the Degrassi people. Because I think when I was walking in, there was a line to be like, here for like a Degrassi QA. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, they usually have some sort of like... Like, I know, like, Bruce Campbell did one. Yes. And, yeah, like, they they usually do some sort of... But it doesn't seem to be as many, is what you mean. Yeah. I don't know. Just, like, the programming in general seemed kind of sparse. Mm. Um, and then... Although, I, I guess they had, like... Someone was telling me that they had... I can't remember what it was called. But the all of the voice actors were there. Oh, yeah. Went and read the script to Princess Diaries, but in the voice of the characters that they were, like, famous for. Oh, really? So that would have been kind of amusing, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just one of those things that you have to, like, seek out what you're looking for. Yeah. Whatever, right, so. But, I mean, it just seems like a lot, like, anime revolution. I don't mean to keep comparing it, but they always have, like, the rave one night and a masquerade one right. night, and they got other stuff going on. There's usually, like, um, a Pokemon tournament room and, uh, like, a Yu-Gi-Oh! Room. That's one of the things, yeah, that seems to be lacking at this event. And maybe it's just a space issue that it's yeah. like, yeah, there's no, like, yeah, game room or yeah. they come here and, like, test some stuff. Like, yeah, like, why not Why not board games? Board games are huge these days. Yeah, and totally. There's board games um, booths there. Why is there no demo room to check out a couple of games? Or, yeah. to, like you say, you bring some of your own and people can play with you. Yeah. And I know that's not... Because I know people were kind of, like, to me anyways, they were kind of complaining that there wasn't enough going on aside from vendors. Well, and yeah. Which, I mean, there was a lot of vendors. You could probably spend an entire day just looking at everything. Sure, if you're spending a lot of time at a booth, yeah. Yeah, totally. (laughs) But yeah, as you say, there's no... There's no, yeah, general purpose rooms to, like, check out. They did have this year, and I don't recall seeing them last year, but there was a couple um, video game setups. Like, there were some, some virtual lower reality games and some PC games and some console games set up so people could go play them. They Street usually Fighter. have that. I think there was just more this year. It yeah. was definitely a bigger chunk of it than comparatively to, like, last year, I think, so. Anime Revolution had a really big section for that. Oh, really? Yeah, this year. Hmm. Yeah, you didn't go because you had Lyme sick. disease. <laughs> yes, I was. I was quite ill. But uh, so, it, but I, I think that's an interesting point. Like you say, that there's nowhere for people to just gather and play some games or yeah. do some stuff. I think so they, I think it's really lacking. Yeah, it's like they almost leave people to their own devices to be like, go to the hotel or go to the food court and do that. Yeah, go it's hang, like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't I be like still here and like you know yeah. be with some cool people? I also feel like. It's a huge missed opportunity when they don't have a food vendor in the vending hall. Yes. Because, like, anytime they do, shit sells out all the time. You never have extra food lying around. I suppose they have to pay extra or something to have. Probably, yeah. But it's, like, for the vendors, like, and obviously, and, like... My perspective is only going to be from a vendor's perspective because yes. I've never attended a con as an attendee. But um, it's like a huge thing for the vendors to be able to get food in the same place that they can't leave. They can't leave, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but I, overall, how did you? Th- what did you think about it? Did you have fun? Well, I mean, I always have fun, and like you yeah. say, um, att- uh, it's funny that you bring that up. Attending it as a vendor. I always prefer that. I've yeah. been to like a couple things where I'm like normal guest type person. It's not as cool. <laughs> or, or it's just like, you just, you know, there's a different perspective on it. And I guess as well, having run and attended so many events that it, going to the one, you just, you see too much flaws. <laughs> yeah, so, that's fair. No, yeah. So like you say, it, it's Oh always, man, can no, we no. talk about flaws? <laughs> Wait, first let me tell you, <laughs> I did enjoy myself. That's it good. was, it was, uh, it's always cool to see. And I feel like the overall, it was not as busy as it was last year. Definitely not. Uh, just people wise, right? Just, and yeah, not even close. Just, yeah, I don't think so. But it's, it's still everyone that comes out seems to be having a good time and yeah. some great costumes and, you know. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk cool. about the costumes yeah, in depth I, in a minute. Sure, but. I just wanted to say overall, did Over- give it enjoy it. 
Yeah, I had fun this year too. And I think part of it was that you worked with me the, the entire time <laughs> and I didn't have to just be by myself for an entire day. Yay! Yeah, which is, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It makes a difference because okay. otherwise you're just like, I'm slogging through this and mm. my body hurts yeah. and I hate everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and these nerds keep talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, overall, I had a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it wasn't as it, it it would have been nicer if it was busier. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's always it always kind of is, and the day goes by quicker, or you you, you know you interact with just more people and differently, right? So. Plus, like when it's busy and you're selling a lot, that sure. just feels better. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna lie, I'm there to sell stuff. Sure. But it's, it's way more interesting when I, like you can put like three people in outfits at the same time and then they all buy them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I quickly want to touch on this, and I hope sure. that this is okay. <laughs> but there's some behind-the-scenes vendor stuff that was ridiculous this oh, year. Sure. So normally, <laughs> with conventions that I've attended as a vendor, it's basically like first come, first serve for loading in and loading out. Right. This year, you had to book your loading in time, and you had to book your loading out time. And while I understand why they would want to do that. They, and part of the reason was that the space for parking the trucks wasn't as big. Right. They didn't rent enough space, I guess. But they were also really underutilizing that space where trucks can park. Oh, really? And they had just like pallets of like chairs and stuff taking up parking. Oh. That they should have put somewhere else. That people could park at. (laughs) That people could park there, right? (laughs) So the idea was that loading in, it would start from the furthest away from the parking area and then move back Mm. until you got to the closest. So loading in, like if you were far away, then you were, you had like a 3 p.m. load in time. And if you were right next to the parking lot, then you had like an 8 p.m. loading time. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So... In theory, that works well, unless you have a shop in Vancouver (laughs) and you have to run that business as well as... So that was a bit annoying. We were a bit late and then they were like, well, we'll have to reschedule, you know, for half an hour later and blah, blah, blah. And so we're like sitting there as they're like... But I'm like, we couldn't leave the shop yet, right? Like, (laughs) I had to wait for the employee to get there. (laughs) And then poor Tony, my husband, he... his booth wasn't even allowed to load in until 7 30 yeah and we were we had already set up by that time and we were leaving yeah then you yeah you were like home i was home <laughs> yeah when he was going in yeah yeah i mean so that was kind of annoying and then loading out was equally annoying because we were in the middle mm. so uh again tony's booth since they were beside the parking yeah, lot they were right at the end yeah they got to load out first. We had to wait until 7.30 to load out. Jeez. We were... <clears throat> the event ended at 5. Yeah. We had everything packed up and our grid wall stacked. Like, everything completely cleaned up at, like, 6.10. Yeah. So we had to sit around for another hour and 20 minutes. Jeez. And, like, I had worked to the whole con, yeah. so I was fucking tired and cranky. <laughs> and I had to work the next day, so it's just, like... That was a bit of a piss off. It should be first come, first serve. The people ahead of us weren't ready to... That's what I mean. Yeah, they're not ready. Like. <laughs> yeah, they're not ready right at 5 p.m. to load out. So yeah. they can't have a 5 p.m. unload. I don't know. So I just... That was a bit of a... That, I mean, that doesn't really affect people's... Um, Oh, and attendees, then, yeah. Yeah, this doesn't affect the attendees or the overall feel of the con, but it, it <laughs> yeah. is a piss off from sure. a vendor's point of view. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of the time, like, the booths are so expensive. Yes. And that's basically how the con gets paid for, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, more than the vendor, more, more than the attendees, right? Mm. So it's just kind of like, can you just be nicer to your vendors because <laughs> we're paying for this? <laughs> well, and I was joking with somebody as well. It almost feels like at. Uh, I, I, again, I don't know and how long, like, whoever's been running it, like, how long they've been doing this kind of thing, but because it's, like, it seems, say, one or two things are better than the previous year, but then three to five things are worse. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, it's like you fix that, but why is this now bad? <laughs> yeah, like, at least um, for all the, like, qualms I have with Taboo, at least mm. their load in and load out is not stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so that's enough about me bitching. Sure. Let's talk about cosplays. 
Well, I want to talk about briefly. Oh, okay. Um, We're not going to talk about that. No, I want to talk briefly. Well, it kind of can uh, equate. I was actually kind of surprised, and I know it's not like. It's really come back, but how much steampunk was integrated into this fan expo? Yeah, actually, not only did I was do, too. Yeah, they, not only did they do the steampunk 101, where I guess they, you know, some people talk about costuming and this and that, because I spoke to somebody who went and they were talking about what they kind of were saying, oh, you know, leathers and this and that. Yeah. But then there was a huge section of the entire thing that was just like all these steampunk things. So <laughs> that was a time traveler's bazaar. Uh, yes. And they're actually, that's an annual thing that happens in Vancouver. It's a one day oh. event that uh, usually, I believe it's like. Well, or it usually takes place off Commercial Drive, and it's like oh, two bucks okay. to get in, and vendors' tables are like fifty bucks. We've right. we've never done it because it's a one day event, and it's kind of like a bitch to set up sure. and tear down, right? Yeah. But um, yeah. So I guess they got in touch with Fan Expo and yeah. worked out some sort of deal or something. I was just yeah, I was just shocked at how big of a presence it was compared to years in the past, and also it's like. It's sort of niche still. Yeah. Like, the people that do it are really into it, but not oh, everyone's definitely. into it. Like, people all recognize it now, but it's not like everyone does it, right? As it were. And, well, <laughs> like, working at the store... Of course, yeah. This year was the year of the steampunk wedding. We had so oh, really? many people coming in <laughs> that were having steampunk weddings. Really? And every year at Halloween for the past three or four years, so many people who aren't into cosplay or anything like that come in and they're like i want to be steampunk and i'm like you want to be like what like yeah. steampunk what and they're like just steampunk just steampunk me out and i'm like all right here's like four pairs of goggles <laughs> <laughs> well and yeah over time uh, like i said more people are recognizing it but it's it's still like i was like i said just shocked that it was such a big presence and such a part of it because it was like on the main page that they're like we're doing all the steampunk stuff yeah and i guess maybe again they're just trying to attract more people to the convention that made me don't go because they're like oh that's all just comic books and whatever and i'm not yeah. into that but it's like oh there's a steampunk thing so i mean i guess they're trying to attract Although, other things i mean come on if somebody's into steampunk they're going to be going to conventions <laughs> maybe i don't think it's attracting a new clientele I don't know. I don't think somebody's like, oh, I'm like into steampunk a lot, but all this other nerd shit is garbage. <laughs> hey, you know, everyone's got their tastes. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Fair enough. I'm calling bullshit on that okay. one. Okay, okay. I think they were just, I don't know what they were doing. But it's always interesting, though, because with some of those people, like, for their costumes, yeah. they, they're they either just, like, you say, they, they're they wearing a pair of goggles that they heavily modified with, like, a top hat, a jacket, and this and that. It's just, like, you just add rivets to things, and you're like, yeah. I'm in. But some people, it seems like it goes too far, you know, where it's just, like, you know, it's too intricate, where you're like, that's not even practical. <laughs> well, no. It's, yeah. It, like, it but almost I, seems like it should be practical in a way. I really like steampunk because I feel like it's, uh... It's open ended. Like you could do like, um, like it's accepting. Mm. Like you could do like a white shirt with brown pants, suspenders, a top hat, or not even a top hat and goggles, right? And be yeah. like, I'm steampunk, and everyone would be like, Yeah, you're steampunk. Or you could have a steam powered motorcycle that you ride around, yeah, yeah. That you, <laughs> and and then you're still steampunk. So I kind of yeah. like it for that reason. That's fair. There's no like there's, I guess there's different levels of steampunk, but you're not. Not, not steampunk yeah. It, yeah no I was just gonna say like, it just seems like some people go too far with the impracticality of the items they're wearing <laughs> oh definitely yeah, yeah. <laughs> although I do have to say now that I said it, it's not not steampunk but we get so many people who are like I want to be steampunk for Halloween and I'm like well here's a brown corset and they're like that's not steampunk and I'm like <laughs> what is steampunk to you yeah. do you have a picture yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> Especially some of those ones with like the metal rivets on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, like I don't. I I think it is steampunk. No, steampunk is when you blah 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's, like, it's like metal music. And there's like the tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. Oh, I can't wear that. It's black. Yeah. Yeah. No, people wear black and steampunk. It's all good. Don't yeah. worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um. But let's talk about costume. Sure. So this year, for the first year ever, mm -hmm. I wore a cosplay. Yeah, you did. At a con. I dressed up as Velma on Saturday. It was good. It was great. It was good. Yeah, it was actually really fun. Uh, I felt a little bit like I didn't look like I was in a costume. Like I felt <laughs> a little bit like I looked like I worked at a library. <laughs> but that's Velma. Yeah. But that's Velma, yeah. yeah. 
Um, I had a few people ask if I was Tina from Bob, Bob's Burgers. Yeah, I caught that a couple times yeah. too. <laughs> but uh, overall, it was pretty cool. Like people who know me from conventions only were pretty psyched that I (laughs) had dressed up. (laughs) So that's cool. Because I just haven't before, and I've been doing them for like seven years, right? Um, But it was fun. It was cool. People asking to be in pictures. Except the guy that was... I'm going to call someone out. The guy that was dressed up as Austin Powers was a little creepy. Got a little familiar? Got a little familiar, yeah. He's like, I love Velma. Can I get a picture with you? And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) And then I like put my hands on my hips and then he put his arm around my waist it was kind of like oh take the picture and go well you know and that's one of the things in talking about that yeah like the, they have signs nowadays that say you know cosplay is not consent and blah 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 you gotta ask her to take the picture and then and I always find it interesting because you see occasionally people walking around with like GoPros and stuff like that yeah and they're like are you filming because you know you're supposed to kind of be asking people or this you know kind of thing so. I think it's more about, like, not touching people. Because I think they used to have a really big problem with that, right? Yeah, I can see that. And, well. and you know, like, even from, like, five years ago to now, yeah. um, I've noticed that, like, like, five years ago, you know, there'd be, like, old dudes yeah, yeah. asking, like, 14-year-olds right. to do these, like, ridiculous poses. And you're like, oh, that's going right into his spank bang. No. This is so fucking <laughs> yeah, creepy. Yeah, wrong. Run away, sexy Pikachu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I dressed up as Velma, and it was cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, and uh, what I was what I was saying with the, the picture consent sign, because I didn't read the sign. Yeah. But it was, I took some photos at this uh, convention, which I will post. Yeah. Um, nobody said no when I asked if I could take a picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody's super chill, right? Yeah, everyone was very chill about it, and everyone was totally into it, and I want to give a total shout-out to all the people who let me take their picture. They were great, and so many people where I'd just be like, oh, can I take a picture? And they'd be like, yeah. And then they would turn and do some kind of pose, and they, it wouldn't just be like, oh, I'm standing there. They wanted to show off yeah. in a way, and it was great. <laughs> it's awesome, yeah. Yeah. There were some amazing costumes, mm-hmm. and before we get into some of our favorites, sure. I also just want to point out that my parents came to Fan Expo for the yes. first time. Their first convention ever. <laughs> they both dressed up in st- steampunk outfits, Very. and they looked amazing. They glued gears to their faces. Yeah. <laughs> it was so cool. No, yeah, they looked really, really good. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, they were, they, yeah, they just looked really good, yeah, right? They, had a great they time. were into it too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Dan, mm-hmm. what was your favorite cosplay? Oh, interesting. Um, Put you on the spot. Yeah, a little bit. No, well, again, there were so many great costumes. Do you want me to go first? And then you can... Like, I'll do my top three. Have okay, sure. Okay, so there was a girl dressed as, like, Victorian steampunk masquerade Deadpool. Yeah. Which was amazing. And they're going to be in... That'll be in the pictures, that right? Definitely, yeah. Um she like it just looked so cool and it was so recognizable and, yeah. and it just that's what made it so neat it was like recognizable as Deadpool but like but this neat take super on it. like unique yeah. too so yeah. she was awesome second was Dracula yes he, this guy that had actually bought his hat and his glasses at Venus and Mars which is where I work mm-hmm. please don't stalk me <laughs> um unless you want to come by of course but, um he did a screen accurate Dracula Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman from Bram Stoker's Dracula, and it was fantastic. Yes. It looked like he stepped out of the screen and onto the con floor. Yeah, like, he it was looked really, really good. It was really good. I didn't recognize him at first when he came over to say hi. Yeah. So. <laughs> that was good. And then my third favorite was actually a group of cosplayers, mm-hmm. and I think you missed them, but they were dressed up as. Um, oh, yes, no, I saw them. Spaceballs. Oh, no, I didn't see them. Sorry. I was okay. somebody else. <laughs> um, so there was Dark Helmet, yeah. uh, Barf, and what's the princess's name? Princess, oh, she's from Druidia, Princess, oh my gosh, the name escapes me now. Anyways, the three of them. Just Princess. They, the Princess, yeah. <laughs> calls a Princess a lot. Uh, they were dressed up in their... Vespa. Vespa, yes. yeah, yeah. And they were awesome. Oh, really? I yeah, yeah. definitely missed them, unfortunately. I think I sent you a picture, didn't I? No. No, I sent, I I sent you a picture... Of something else. Of yeah. Spider-Man, who yes. was like spider-man captain america yeah. mashup and that was really fucking cool yeah it too. was really good the costume it was like, the coloration so well done so well perfect yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think we posted that on our instagram yes yes i did yeah i might have posted the i might have posted the trio as well 
Oh, maybe that, yeah. I think I did. If I didn't, I'll check and I will. <laughs> yeah, get, get, get that posting on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so those are my... Oh, and you know what? I, as a bonus... Mm, shout out. Yeah. As a bonus shout out, the... Um, the group that dressed up as the founders from Hogwarts. That's what I thought you were going to say when you were saying the group. Oh, yeah. They were pretty cool, too. They were really well done. Yeah. yeah I didn't really see the Gryffindor, but the... They came by later. Maybe you were oh, at the booth. And maybe I wasn't there, yeah. yeah. But the the Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin were pretty well done. Yeah, they were really good. And I didn't know what they were at first, but I, like, recognized the colors, and yeah. then I saw that they had the Horcrux, or, the, oh, like, yeah, the yeah. items, right? So she had the, the... The crown. The crown, and then the cup, and the locket, and I'm like, oh, my <laughs> God, you guys are the founders. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw them... Uh, yeah, they were against the back wall for a little bit, and then, but again, there was the one missing, and then they came by again later. Oh, cool. Yeah, they, were, they were pretty good. They were pretty well done. So what were your top three? Oh, man. I still... Okay, I gotta say there was... I was gonna say Victoria and Deadpool. Yeah. She was, she was definitely in the top I think three. she was both of our favorites. Yeah, she yeah. was... It was really, really cool. It yeah. Was, like I said, it was just so well done. My parents got a picture with her. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she was really well done. I liked her. There was also... Um, Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, man. It was, um... <laughs> was it one that you took a picture of? No, I don't think I did. Oh. Because it was earlier in the day, and I was taking pictures later. Yeah. Um. Oh, no, that's what it was. Sorry. There was a few different Lokis that I took some pictures of. Wait, I forgot one. Okay. You're going to have to pause for oh, a geez. second. I just remembered. No, just... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I forgot, but Jenna, you know, yep. Jenna... She's a cosplayer. Mm. Her friend was dressed up as Trixie Mattel from Drag Race as Princess Peach. Right, yes. And it was so (laughs) fucking good and so spot on. And then he came to talk to me the next day and I didn't even, I had no idea that it was him. Yeah, it was so good. Anyways, back to you. (laughs) Well, I was going to say, there was a few different Lokis and they all had something that I liked about their costume. Yeah. And so, like, there was one, she had, like, the really good leathers. I did take a picture of her. Yeah. And there was the one dude who had, um, he had more of the armor with, like, the, the helmet. Yeah, more of the comic version, right? Yeah, more right? the comic version. And then there was another one, and I didn't get a picture of her, but she had, like, the scepter. Oh, well, yeah. Right? And so it was, like, the three of them in different combinations, but there was some good Loki. I think the one who kind of, like, projected the one of the best was the one I did get the picture of where she's standing there. Oh, yeah, she's she just, like, she, yeah, like, yeah. looks like Loki. Yeah. yeah, like, the black leathers, and she's got her hair really all slicked back and everything. Yeah. It was... That I was really well liked, done. I really liked it. And then there was, um... Uh, actually, I... I I don't know if it's, it was one of my top three, but um, I really liked there was a girl who had Jabba's head and she was slave Princess Leia. That was pretty cool. And then her tattoo, like <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, had, she had like, I, I, she had made tattoos that yeah. were like, you know, like fuck the patriarchy. Yeah, and stuff. down with the empire, yeah. rebel scum, I think. Yeah. It was, <laughs> stuff like that. It was good. So that was really good. I, no, it was resist the patriarchy. That's what oh, it was. was <laughs> but it had said um, the empire and, and she then, crossed it out and yeah. then wrote patriarchy underneath. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah. And I, um... I think just because of the intricacy involved, the 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 Reinhardt that I did also get a managed to get a picture of. He was it was really well done. Was the, the blue guy from Overwatch. Was oh, there. okay, yeah, yeah. Just because the armor was huge, huge. and he had the weapon, which unfortunately I didn't get a picture of. Um, but it's this giant gold hammer. That yeah, I assume he made. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, like I said, it's pick out just like. I know. The top three, but... Those are the so ones that ones. stick out to me, like the ones that I... Yeah, yeah. That, you, that you named as well. And like yeah. Said, there, was, there was a couple people that I, I caught a glimpse of, and I was like, oh, oh and I like, lost them, because there was, there was, of course, a lot of, like, um, Harley Quinn and this and that. But oh, yeah. I never... I actually only saw, I think, one Catwoman, or at least they were all three of them together as the... Oh, the, the Vixens. The Vixens, yeah. and I wanted to get a picture of them, but then I came around the corner, and they were gone, and I was like, dang it! Yeah. <laughs> so... I didn't manage to get any Wonder Woman pictures, but there was a fair amount of Wonder Woman. There was that one girl that had the cloak as well, and she looked pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, I honestly thought, uh, talking about the costumes, that it was going to be... The hotter costume was going to be the Wonder Woman. Yeah. And there was was still quite a few of them, but not as many as I thought. Like, almost kind of, like, lesser than still Harley Quinn. Yeah, I was going to say, there was still more Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) She is... She's the winner of life, I guess. Well, I think it's... Her costume can be easy, depending on how much you can go. Yeah. So... You could kind of just, you could kind of just wear red and black and call yourself Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah, which but is cool. Like I said, there was a few really good Wonder Woman. There was a couple of cool uh, Judge Dreads. And, yeah, um, which you don't 
There's a lot of spider mans this year. Yes. I feel like the Spider-Man onesie is, I guess, is it easier to obtain nowadays? I guess so. a lot of people wearing one. <laughs> but it looked good. Oh, it looks great. Yeah, it yeah. It's like super great. And I did appreciate the guy in the Spider-Man, like in the Toby... Or the homecoming one? The homecoming, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, like a homemade one, Yeah, which he was literally cool. had like just the hood with the goggles. The goggles <laughs> cut out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was well done, too. Yeah, absolutely, it was, yeah. So, like I say, um, a lot of people do some really cool stuff. There's some stuff, uh, and it's either I might not recognize it, or it's just a costume that someone puts together yeah. that uh, looks really cool. Um, and I think, like, we were talking about, or maybe we were talking like, the materials, yeah, you can get them now. And yeah. You can, and there's, like, you know, methods on how to do it on the internet. And, totally, you know, yeah. And, like, there are communities to be like, oh, I'm trying to build this piece, but I'm having this problem. People would be like, okay, I got you. <laughs> Here's what you do. Here's how you sew it to make yeah. it look good. Yeah, <laughs> you know? totally. So it's it's really good. <laughs> yeah. No, there was some excellent, excellent calls. I was surprised there was no Doctor Strange. Not even one. Oh. Unless no. you saw one. <laughs> you know what? I didn't see one in person, but I did mm. see a picture of one, <laughs> and it was really well done. And he had, you know how they do the the yeah. runes kind of with hand. Yes. He had like something that was attached to a ring, so it looked like he was. It must have been the same guy who did that last year, then maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Last year there was a guy who had, and he had the the same. He had the green runes yeah. on his hands, and uh, he had the cape and everything, and he was really good. That's awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I was actually shocked that there yeah. wasn't one, but, eh. yeah, I guess it's tough, maybe not tougher to put together, but it can, if you don't do it, if you don't look good, you just, you won't look right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it totally made me want to do cosplay more, sure. even if it's just for, like, my Instagram, I'm like, fuck, <laughs> I just want to do it, it's, it's cool, right? Yeah, it totally, and, and like I was saying before, how they bring some of these cosplayers to the conventions, and yeah. meet and stuff like that, right, and... Um, it's fucking they, cool. Yeah, they did the panel, and I assume, you know, if you talk to any of those people in the Time Traveler Bazaar, they probably tell you how to make certain things, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I just so. want to make, like, costumes now. I just, yeah. like, every time I see something, I'm like, I want to do a costume of that. It's mm. awesome. Yeah, and well, and it's interesting, too, because, like, there was that one couple dressed as the Voltron thing, mm-hmm. and it's like, people still do stuff with, you know, simpler materials, but it can still look really good, or is it, yeah. like, is it just paper mache, cardboard, I don't know what, you know? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, it's just all good. It's a yeah. good, friendly, warm community. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and like I was saying, too, like, no one was, you know, down on me taking their photo, you know, or this totally. or that, so, yeah. There was that really cool one where that woman built uh, Jack Skellington. Yeah, like a, it was like a puppet that she stood behind. Yes, and it and was she like dressed 10 feet tall. All in black. And it, yeah, it was like 10 feet tall, and she had a little yeah. Sally with her. Like yes. that was a person, right? Yeah. And then she would, like, the way yeah. that she built it <laughs> made it look like he was walking like Jack Skellington, too, which yeah. was pretty awesome. Like, it was with the really weird. Cool bend and everything yeah i've never seen anything like that it was it was pretty cool <laughs> yeah. yeah so are you gonna cosplay anytime soon dan <laughs> i don't know i mean like i said it's always cool at these events and you're always inspired and you're yeah. like man that'd be so sweet and then it's like oh it's so hard to put together <laughs> but, but you know what but yeah, I, I mean you gotta start somewhere really. i was thinking about it and i'm like making was making a list and i'm like velma wasn't that hard for me to put together quite true and half of the reason it came together is because I randomly stumbled upon an orange sweater cardigan or uh, turtleneck, turtleneck sweater neck frame. So um, I think that um, I think you just have to aim lower. Well, I know that's what I was going to say. There was that one girl, uh, she was dressed like the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That was pretty cool. It was really cool. And it made me thinking, I was like, I have a chain shirt. I was like, I can make a hover, like, you know, the yeah, yeah. piece that goes over it. And, you know, you make the helmet and it's like, blam. You're done. Done. Yeah. Right. It's black pants. It's black Good. Pan. Yeah. So I was like, hey, you know, it, again, it's, uh, I don't, I don't know where I go though. <laughs> you know, so, Instagram. Just Instagram. Yeah. Just Instagram. Yeah. So our like 10 listeners out there, mm-hmm. uh, would you like to see us doing cosplay on our Instagram? Oh. Well, you can uh, contact us. <laughs> Uh, on our Instagram, which is at tome underscore of underscore uselessness, or you can email us at uh, demon and dan tou at gmail.com. <laughs> or leave a comment. Or leave a comment. Down oh, below. can you do that? Yeah. Oh, cool. I always enable it. No one's uh, left a comment. <laughs> yes. Leave us a comment. Comment. So yeah. you want us to dress up. What do you want to dress up as? <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, it would definitely be something. Maybe we to could try. do some sort of like. Like duo no. costume, like uh, like um, I don't know. 
Well, you had some ideas you were talking about before. The we could, but we could dress up as two members of Metal Metalocalypse. Yes. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Yeah. <laughs> That'd actually be really fun. That'd be so easy, too. It's like a black t-shirt, jeans, and a wig. Corpse paint. And corpse paint. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Put, if oh. no one's watched Metal Metalocalypse out there, recommended, watch it. Well, we will eventually do an episode on that. Probably. Yeah. Because it's pretty great. Not probably. <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like I was saying, it was... Uh, You'd be Toki. Tokis? <laughs> yeah. And I'll be Squiz Guard. I have a blonde wig at home. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I just meant to say that it was too bad that it just wasn't as busy. You know, people-wise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that is a bummer, but... Because it's always more fun, and then, like I said, there's always more costumes and more people, and, you know, just, uh, you know, more interaction. Yeah. Do you want to touch on anything else? I can't think of anything I'd like to touch on. It was fun. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad we... I, I, fun to go. The end, right? Like, yeah, exactly. I'm always glad every year that I get to go. Oh, I bought stuff. Yeah, I, see, I always buy stuff, too. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't buy stuff. There was a booth... Ne- my husband bought me something. Yeah. There was a booth next door to us that had the coolest lounge fly Marvel purses. <laughs> and there was two that I really liked. One was a Gwenpool, like, almost like a laptop bag. Mm. And one was, like, a smaller... Spider-Man purse and they just they you know if you are familiar with Marvel then you can tell what they are yeah. but if you're not they're just kind of nice looking bags yeah, like very stash. I think it's much better than a coach bag <laughs> obviously <laughs> but uh, yeah so I showed my husband like so that he could like maybe think about yeah, Christmas yeah. or something and then he just bought it and gave <laughs> it to me so I was pretty happy about that yeah what did you buy, Dan? I went to... There's this couple. They're a leather working... They do leather uh, products. They're from Salmon Arm. I think it's Sunburst Leather. And I have bought something from them three years in a row now. Yeah. Every year that they've come to Fan Expo. And so I bought two wrist cuffs from them. They're really nice. They're really nice. He does, yeah, it's all handmade. And I was, I've was i talked to them a little bit. And they actually make some stuff for like police and fisheries people. And they make wallets and all sorts of cool stuff. Check them out. And then I bought a leather mask, which I was wearing. You were sh- We were showing it off in the booth, and then I was, like, putting it on. Because There's a, a local my... guy called, uh, his company is called K-West Costuming. Okay. Or Costumes. I don't recall. Costumer? Oh, fuck. I know it's K-West Costume something. It's a really nice guy. Yeah, and the great, great mask. And he, <laughs> he, he makes these really amazing masks, and I've been, like, wanting to carry them in the store, so he brought a few that we could kind of, like, sample at Fan Expo, and I kept getting Dan to wear it. Um, and it looked really good on you. Yeah, it, it was comfy, it looked great, yeah. and uh, it went well with what I was wearing, which was a bunch of VSMRs gear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, and I bought, the, bought that mask. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I, it's always interesting. I always feel like I'm not the right attendee because, like, I go and I'm checking stuff out, but I'm like, eh, I don't really buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, you were vending too, right? Yeah, that's true, but it's like, you know, there's cool posters, there there's t-shirts. There are some really cool stuff, and if I had infinite cash and infinite sure. space, to store stuff, then I probably would buy a lot more. Like, well, yeah, and some of the people in the artist alley do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, and, totally. You know, there's cool prints. And, you know, this there and is a wig booth. Oh my god, yeah. I probably could have spent like, I probably could spend a couple thousand dollars <laughs> if I had it. Yeah. Fuck, I just love wigs, and they're so nice. There yeah. was this beautiful um, <laughs> lace front, long wig that was half black and half white. Yes, yeah, so you were telling me about Oh that, my yeah. god, it was so pretty. <laughs> it was like 150 bucks, mm-hmm. but totally worth it. Well, and I think uh, I've talked to some people that attend like the event and like they save, you know, all year so they can attend the event and then if there's oh, guests, yeah. you know, so they can get like all the photos. I talked to somebody them. one year who had spent a thousand dollars on just pictures and autographs. Yeah, I think I was there. Yeah, she was just like... <laughs> yeah, she was She was amped. She was amped. Showed me all of them. They all looked yeah. great, right? It was yeah. awesome. But I was like, holy shit. What I find always funny with that is how people buy these things and then they have no mechanism to store them. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you got to plan ahead just a little. Just to, like, yeah. Bring a, bring a frame or a cardboard thing you gotta to protect your... you got to have your Gwenpool laptop bag yeah, yes, to store it. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, then they're walking around with them and, you know, they, they're expensive, they paid money, they're yeah. a great memory, but then they're like, hey, what do I do? <laughs> Yeah, totally. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. So, you know, tip, pro tip, if you're going to attend a convention and you want to get some pictures, bring something just to carry the pictures in. Yeah, bring a little clipboard. <laughs> yeah, file folio, yeah. you know, something solid, waterproofish. Take care of your shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, was there anything that you saw that you wanted to buy that you... Well, like I said, there was a couple cool um, prints that had some Blade Runner. Prints. Man, there were so many sword vendors this year. Really? There I was... mean, I know we were parked across that same sword vendor. Yeah, well, and he's been there the whole... Yeah. Every year, there. right? Yeah. yeah. I think... I there think I saw yeah. at least five sword really? vendors. I remember, I remember two. <laughs> okay. I think I saw at least five different ones. Nice. Which kind of sucks for... Yes. Yeah. Too bad for water muddies the waters as it were yeah. and spreads the pool around but i mean oh yeah I, I guess it's it's as the convention runners you know they don't turn people away really yeah if they want to vend at their convention unless they're full which <laughs> pretty much yeah. yeah yeah um no i guess yeah like i said a couple no. prints yeah there was a couple prints that had some cool i really enjoy blade runner i love blade runner 2049 by the way go see it um but there was some cool there was some cool like noir prints that had like some Blade Runner quotes with some of the characters and I was like oh those are pretty cool um I always keep an eye out for like some neat posters like some Ghost in the Shell stuff and this and that stuff yeah. like you don't really see every day but I don't buy it <laughs> yeah but but I, I like seeing them and I'm like nice and well you need to put them up somewhere too right and put, yeah like, where do I well or like I say where I have to protect it on my way home and yeah this and that. so <laughs> I've gotten a Bought a few prints over the years. Yeah? Yeah. Actually, one of my favorite ones is Miss Frizzle and Mary Poppins making out. <laughs> I have that hanging by my door. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm an adult. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> it means you can do what you want. Yeah, that's right. What about you? Did you see anything that you were like, no? Aside well, from that wig. <laughs> the wig. Yeah. Um, the sword guys across from us had an Aragorn sword. Oh, that, that was had, nice, yeah. Yeah, in, in the sheath with the extra dagger and yes. everything which I'm always just like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the grey cloaks that we were carrying yeah I want that but that's <laughs> I can get those that, that's every day I did have somebody in on uh, Monday they, who came and bought one of those grey cloaks because they saw them at the event <laughs> well there you go so that was kind of funny that is hilarious I'm like oh you could have got it with no tax but you came into the store instead <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. what are you going to do um other than that, I didn't really see... Like, I mean, there's pro- I didn't spend a lot of time looking at booths. Right. There's probably, if I had spent more time, stuff that I would have bought. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was that lady that uh, had the, the like, <laughs> subversive cross-stitch that was like... Oh, yeah, you're telling Go me about fuck that. yourself and stuff. <laughs> yeah, you showed me that picture. <laughs> I'm like, I would have put that up in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That about wraps it up. Yeah, I don't really have anything really much more to say. No? Aside, aside from, again, I want to give a final thanks to everybody who let me take a, their photo. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can find us on Instagram at tome underscore of underscore uselessness. Mm-hmm. Or you can follow me if you don't like Dan. I'm at Lady Adventure for Hire. Or you can follow Dan if you don't like me. He's at lowkey604. Mm-hmm. Spelled... L O W K E Y. Yes. Um, you can also visit our website, which is tomeoflesslessness.com. It is. Uh, or you can email us at Devin and Dan T O U at <laughs> gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's it. Yeah. Unless you got anything else to add? No, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to our bonus. Our episode. special episode. Special. Yeah. Very special episode.